Okay, folks, not Dan here for a happy new year, happy new video. And I'm going to try and make this a quick one because I got to get it out quick because, well, I'm a little behind and these rules updates actually went into effect on the new year. So, what have we got today? The list of rules changes here are minimum deck size increase, zone publicity changes for momentum and card pool, identity and titles, designating successful attacks, which are ones that dealt damage, and you know, I'm quite happy to have attacks that dealt damage listed as successful attacks. That's a nice piece of terminology we can refer to. Multiple ability functional update. That's interesting because given that we got Echo, I was thinking multiple might even go completely from the future of the game. So let's see what they've done to it. But we'll go through these in order. We'll get a minimum deck size increase first. When we launched MHA Spotlight as the premier format for Universus back in 2021, and yes, it's known as Spotlight now if you haven't caught that. It's the same as MHA only, but They've got a fancy name for it because they're introducing the other spotlight formats as well. Back then, there was a lot of talk about deck sizes and playset counts. There'd be quite a bit less cards available to players at the start of the spotlight format to craft decks from, and the previous minimum deck size was determined to be too large to allow for variety in deck building. Which, yeah, I think that holds true. I think in the early days of the spotlight format, when we had only one set, we were actually forced to use things like two checks in Nomu, but nobody in their right mind would build with otherwise so yeah i see how that was definitely an issue and how going down to 50 cards plus starting character made sense at the time as we released sets it was always our intention to increase the deck size back up but we struggled to land on a benchmark moment in the game how many sets would be enough why would we be making the change now how does the data indicate it to be the right time well, with the refocus on creating the universe as standard format it felt like the right time to update the minimum deck size for organized play with this, constructed format decks will now require a minimum of 60 cards plus a starting character. Now, that is bizarre to me because 60 including starting character is what the old version of it was. So 60 plus starting character is actually one card more than we've ever had as the minimum deck size before. We know there is now enough variety to allow for creative deck building and variety in the available card pool that this increased deck size will not negatively impact deck construction except for the fact that we're about to get two more spotlight formats. UU starts with technically two sets, but one of them is currently a 79 card set due to past bans. So that's the smallest set in Universe's history as far as I'm aware, which means it's not going to be a large card pool for that to work with, and 61 cards in that card pool is going to be rough. And then we're going to have an Attack on Titan spotlight format, which when it first comes out, will be one set. There's no way that's going to work. So yeah, I'm not convinced this was the time to increase the minimum deck size. It makes sense for my hero. It makes sense for standard. It makes sense for retro. It does not make sense for the other formats that are coming. Though I can see exactly why UVS Games wanted to change this deck size up again, because the 50 card format has always been way too consistent for aggro and that has been the problem with pretty much every ban list they've put out. Every time they've had to ban something it's because aggro has been too good and consistent. Then we have zone publicity changes. There are a few holdovers from the historic legacy of universes that we feel have continued solely out of a mentality of, well it's always been that way. This includes having different rules for what face down cards you can look at and which you can't. As it stands, often when teaching someone new to the game, they tend to question why they can look at face down foundations but not momentum or cards in the card pool, and usually the answer is simply, that's just what the rules say. So, I mean, it is functionally different, but at the same time there's no reason for it to be functionally different like that, necessarily. Because, yeah, okay, you can have a face down card in your stage that could come from a face down zone and so be completely unknown, and they let you look at that. Put a face down card in your momentum that comes from an unknown zone that you can't look at. And I like not being able to see the cards in my momentum. I like having to memorize things, think about things, think about the unknown cards that have got there through other means. That all works nicely to me. But at the same time, I do understand that it's inconsistent and there is no reason for it to be inconsistent per se. We're not looking to make changes simply for the sake of making changes but we have committed to ironing out some of the wrinkles in game design when possible. We already allow notes to be taken, so momentum being unknown is only a slight inconvenience most of the time, and with the increased occurrence of face-up momentum mechanics, it's often a moot point. We want to decrease some of the learning pain points, and after many design sessions and discussions, we think it's time to change these zones to work more like the rest of the game. 
Moving forward, face down cards and momentum in the card pool will be private zones rather than unknown, meaning that the player may look at their own cards in both zones now when they wish to. That's weird to me, but fair enough. I don't see anything wrong with that, and if I really want my memory games, I can just do things that play with the opponent's momentum. So yeah, I don't hate that. I find it bizarre. I'll get used to it. Then we have identity and titles. By now you've probably seen that in upcoming products, the naming convention for our character cards is changing. The specific mechanical details of this update can be better understood by covering two key terms, identity and title. Identity is the core of the character, the main name or moniker they are known to the world they exist in by. Yep, more commonly known in the past as their character name. Title is any particular alias or characterization attributed to the character, previously known as version indicator. And I don't see any reason to change the name from version indicator, because version indicator covers both the numbers that used to be there and the new line names that are there now. They talk about how this clarifies things. I don't think it does. I don't think this was a necessary change per se. I think all they really need to do is say the title was the version indicator and everything will be great. But hey, I see no issue with this either. This is a meaningless terminology update. However, I do find their example of there being an All Might who is All Might Symbol of Peace interesting, given that both All Might and Symbol of Peace are currently existing cards. Then we have designating successful attacks, attacks that dealt damage. This one's simple enough. It can be difficult sometimes if a combat phase goes long enough remember exactly which cards dealt damage and which ones didn't. It's already a common practice, but we are now codifying it into the rules. In gameplay, when an attack deals damage, players will now turn that attack sideways to signify that it can go to momentum. The position of a card in the card pool does not matter to any game mechanics in this instance. It is just a visual reminder to both players. Okay, that's a lie. The position of a card in the card pool does matter. It signifies whether or not that card is committed. And there is a card in retro that cares about whether cards in the card pool are committed. Now, that character is banned because Jasco and UVS games don't like that mechanic, but that mechanic exists and older cards commit cards in pretty much every zone. And there is no reason that mechanic can't work. They just haven't written it into the rules. So the idea that we're now committing cards to say that they dealt damage means that there are now two separate things that having a committed card in the card pool means. I hate that. Furthermore, this is not common practice. I have never seen anybody turn a card 90 degrees to say that it dealt damage. I've seen them turn it like 20 degrees or so, just tilt it slightly, and I've seen them turn it 180 degrees so that it's the other way facing up. I have never seen anyone turn them 90. This is not how people play the game, and this is not an accurate representation of gameplay state. I do not like this. I will not be following this rule, but I'm perfectly happy to turn my cards 180 if that's what's required. Multiple... This one's mostly important for the retro format, but with all these other updates, it felt the right time to announce this change in a legacy mechanic. We're updating the functional process of playing multiple abilities. And yeah, we knew something was going to happen to multiple because, well, Echo was supposed to replace multiple, right? But no, no, the copies of the multiple attack will no longer be created from the discard momentum because explaining the process of playing the multiple ability was fairly arduous and somewhat confusing. A common practice for many players to simply put their momentum into their card pool, but the problem with that is it creates a habit. The momentum must be discarded to pay the cost and then come back out as part of the effect. And yeah, people were just going straight from momentum to card pool, which was technically incorrect. And I think that's how it worked in the really early days when I started, but that has long since changed. And the fact that people still do it that way was causing problems. I genuinely thought my opponent was cheating the first time I saw them take a momentum, put it into their discard pile, look at it, and then add it to their card pool. Because you're not supposed to look at your momentum, and you're not supposed to look at face down cards in your card pool. So why can you look at the momentum going to your card pool? Turns out it was because it went through a public zone, the discard pile first. But you know, when they first introduce you to that, that does not seem right. So yeah, the fact that they're changing it makes sense. The way they're doing this now is they're saying, yes, you discard the momentum. Multiple will be enhanced discard X momentum, minimum one, maximum multiple rating. Add X cards from the top of your deck to your card pool face down as multiple copies of this attack. Add those cards to the attack stack. So it now takes cards from the top of the deck, which means it mills you twice as much. But I mean, that's not the biggest deal, especially as deck size is going up. But it also means you can't control what cards are in your card pool with it. So certain interactions don't work anymore, but they're pretty niche. It's not the biggest deal. The main thing is 
this gets rid of that bad habit. This means the cards that go to the card pool aren't the cards that are discarded. You can't just take them straight from your momentum, add them to your card pool. It solves the problem of people playing the card incorrectly. So I actually quite like this change. It seems a little odd at first, and it's strange that they chose to do it now, but it's barely changed the way multiple works, and it's just going to mean that people play it more correctly. I'm quite happy with that. This is my favorite of all these changes, to be honest. It's the one that matters by far the most. Anyway, that's all from this rules update. Do be sure to up the size of your decks to account for this, because we are now playing in a 60 plus 1 format, and that is the case for every format from now on, basically, as of this January. However, a lot of the decks I'll be showing you in the future still will be 50, because, well, I have a few left over from last season that you haven't seen yet, and they're still worth talking about, even if they're technically not legal anymore. So look forward to those, and look forward to a bit of an update on what the current formats are as well. I'll see you then everyone, bye!